to the course Computer Integrated Manufacturing. We have discussed FMS, Flexible Manufacturing System, then Robotics, then PLC. In this lecture, I would like to discuss the Automatic Identification and Data Capture. That is an important topic to be discussed. Now, what is Automatic Identification? What is Automatic Data Capture? Now, you all might be conversant of using QR codes. What is QR? QR is quick response. As the name suggests, it is a quick answer, a quick solution to what you want to do. You like to use your WhatsApp on the Windows platform. It will put, okay, WhatsApp web, just scan this code. You have to scan the code. There are certain QR scanners available. QR scanner is one. Then cam scanner is one certain Android application, iOS applications are there that are used to scan the codes and immediately you can do the transaction or immediately you can just connect to the system. You can use your debit cards, credit cards to make the transactions in the bank. This is all automatic identifications. Now what is happening here? The data that was to be entered manually, in, in man, when I say manually here, manually means entering the computer manually using a keyboard or a mouse. In place of that, you are just using an automatic system so that the data can be identified by the computer itself. There has to be some identification mode in your hand like a credit card or a scanner and there has to be some reader that scans. So what are these? We will discuss this in this lecture. So the contents would go like this, introduction to automatic identification methods. Then reasons for using AIDC, AIDC is again automatic identification and data capture. Major AIDC technologies are barcode and RFID. These are very widely used and other AIDC technologies we will discuss. Now automatic identification and data capture, what is this? This is a family of technologies that provide direct entry of data into a computer or other microprocessor control systems without using a keyboard. Now many of these technologies require no human involvement at all. The data capture entry is completely automatic. It is automatic identification systems which are being uh, used increasingly to collect data in material handling, in manufacturing applications. In material handling if I say that could be applications in shipping, receiving, storage, then sorting, then order picking, knitting or so on. In manufacturing, the applications include monitoring the status of order processing, WIP inventory, work in progress, machine utilization, worker attendance like biometric is very commonly used these days, biometric what does it identifies the, uh, the pattern of the thumb or the, any of the finger impressions that you use. And even the uh, biometric is also there for the eye scan or voice scan, so those kind of identification systems are there. So these are very widely used these days. So what are the advantages or what are the reasons we use AIDC is number one is data accuracy, number two is timeliness, number three is labor reduction. Now what is the accuracy of data? Now errors occurs in both data collection and data entry. There are certain sources of error when it is done manually. So an average rate of error for the manual keyboard entry is one error per 300 characters. So this technology AIDC helps to ignore or get rid of this kind of error that is there because of the manual data entry. Then time factor, as QR I just said quick response. So manual methods are inherently more time consuming than automated methods. So when manual methods are used, there is a time delay between when the activities and event occurred or when the data on the status are entered into the computer. So there is a big difference like uh, making the entry manually in a bank register. The time you made your transaction and the time when the clerk made the entry in the evening that had been happening 20 years past. Now the computers are entering the data instantly. The moment you go to the clerk, the moment you go to the transaction officer, he enters the data and your transaction can be immediately seen in your account. So, this is point number two, timeliness, it is quick response. Third is labor reduction. Now full attention of human workers is required in manual data collection entry. So this is again associated with labor cost and so many things. So 
these drawbacks are virtually eliminated when AIDC is used that is data on activities, events and conditions are required at the location and the time of their occurrence and entered into the computer immediately shortly thereafter. So, these are a few I would say benefits of using AIDC. Now, problem with manual data collection these I have just discussed they are human errors when the data is collected time factor time between occurrence of activities and event of entry associated data manual methods are inherently time consuming the labor cost is there this is already discussed. Applications of AIDC Aut automatic identification has wide range of applications starting from the retail sales and inventory control then material handling that is shipping and receiving sorting and uh, order picking and so on. Then in factory operations like order processing, work in progress, machine utilization, then other applications like I just took the example of the bank transaction and also uh, in hospitals, uh, patients identifications in hospitals, check processing in banks, security system and so on, the certain applications. The components of AIDC, an AIDC system typically consists of three major components, data encoding, machine reading and scanning and data decoding. What is data encoding? So, data encoding here implies that the data has to be used by the computer, it has to be readable by the computer wherever it is being stored. So, what are these? These are alphanumeric characters that are translated into machine readable form. So, what is code? Code is a set of symbols or signals that usually represent these characters. So, a label or tag containing the encoded data is attached to the item that is to be identified like uh, I would discuss the barcode and RFID in detail and other technologies I will give you an introduction to that. For instance, you purchase any items in the big shopping centers, there are certain codes, the QR codes, they scan, the certain kinds of codes are there. Some codes you might have seen the straight bars are there, some codes you might have seen there are kinds of dots. So, kind of the QR code which I just mentioned regarding the WhatsApp using on the uh, windows that is a matrix or two dimensional barcode. These simple straight bars are actually one dimensional barcodes. So, these are the data encoding. So, data is transferred into alph alphanumeric characters. So, then machine reading or scanning is the second part. The scanner reads the encoded data and converts it into alternative form usually an electrical signal. So, then is data decoder, the electrical signal is then transformed into a digital data and finally back into original alphanumeric characters. These are the major components of a automatic identification system. So, the systems can be optical, electromagnetic, magnetic and so on. In optical system, we have generally the barcodes, barcodes can be linear and or two dimensional, optical character recognition OCR and machine vision. These are optical characters, I will discuss about these. Then electromagnetic RFID radio frequency identification is one of the major electromagnetic type of the technology. Then magnetic, magnetic as I took the example of the credit cards or any magnetic tape wherever it is used, the data are encoded magnetically similar to magnetic tape. Next is smart card, these are the plastic cards, those are embedded with microchips, integrated chips. So, integrated circuits are there. So, in these anti-credit circuits have more information than what magnetic tape could carry. Then touch techniques, then touch technology is also there, uh, like there are touch screens there which can identify, which can put the data into their memory, the touch button memories are there, then biometric voice recognition, fingerprint analysis, retinal eye scans. So, these are the major technologies. Now, measures of AIDC reading accuracy, the accuracy of the data that that is represented there has to be high. There is two major measures for that. One first is the first character reading. Next is if the first character is not read properly, then what is the subsequent error in the further characters? So, first is the FRR, first read rate. It is probability of successful correct reading by the scanner in its initial attempt. Now, these are all characters. These characters could be read right or could be read with an error like it could identify a bar which has to be coded maybe as a number 9, it could have identified that, that as maybe number 6. So, this is an error. So, if this error happens for the first time, then this comes into play, substitution error rate. What is SCR? It is the probability of scanner incorrectly reading the encoded characters as 
some other character. So, how is it calculated? The expected number of errors is given by expected number of I would say errors that is equal to SER substitution error rate into n. Now, n here is the data set with number of character n is the number of characters in the data set and SER is the substitution error rate. So, this is how this error is calculated here. So, I am not going into detail of this, this is just an overview of uh, how ADC system works. Next is barcode technology. So, now the error rate in barcode technology is approximately 10,000 times lower than in manual key keyboard data entry. The error rates of the most of other technologies are not as low as barcodes, but are still better than manual methods. So, barcode is also too economical to use. The cost of using RFA technology is around 10 times of what barcodes is. They are widely used in uh, certain applications. So, there are two major kinds of barcodes. Number one is linear, number two is two dimensional. A linear barcode encoded data read using a linear sweep of the scanner and two, in two dimensional encoded data must be read in both directions. Both directions as the name uh, just, just identifies that uh, linear and two dimensional what does this mean. Now, what are the major kinds of linear barcodes? One is width modulated, another is height modulated. Now, width modulated barcodes are symbols that consist of bars and spaces of varying width these are most widely used that is UPC. I will discuss what is UPC and code 39. Height modulated. Now, this symbol consists of bars and spaces of varying heights. Now, these are majorly used in US portal service or zip code identification. Now, what are these? These are the kind of width modulated and height modulated linear barcodes. So, this is a width modulated barcode that is a UPC. This is a height modulated barcode that is a used by posted in US postal services. So, what are these? In a width metal modulated barcode, uh, these are used in retailing or manufacturing. The barcode consists of bars and spaces with varying width, with bars and spaces being highly contrasting in colors. The widths vary here. These contrasting colors are normally black and white. The patterns of bars and spaces is coded to represent numeric or alphanumeric characters. So, these characters, these bars might be representing these characters. These are numeric or alphanumeric. In this case, there are, these are all numeric. It could be also be alphabets. So, this code is subsequently interpreted by a barcode reader. This reading action is done by scanning and decoding the sequence in which bars fall. The barcode reader itself consists of a scanner and decoder. The scanner emits a beam of light that is either automatically or manually swept over the barcode reader. So, this beam can be fixed, this beam like beam of light can also be moving. So, if the beam of the line light is fixed, that is known as fixed beam, otherwise it is known as moving beam. So, if the barcode, suppose this is the barcode, this is the barcode. So, the light is fixed. Generally, in shops or the big malls, the barcode reader that you use or that you see is kind of a fixed beam. The beam does not move. When the beam light is also moving, then it is known as moving beam. Those are generally used when the uh, product is also moving like in conveyors in uh, we have told you the material handling systems when the uh, material is going in conveyors or it is being uh, held on the uh, hoist or so. So, the moving kind of scanners are also used. So, these are the major barcodes this is the height modulated the height here tells the different kinds of characters here. So, these are both the linear barcodes or single dimensional. Now, conversion of barcode into an electrical signal, how do we read barcode? R reading means the barcode is decoded here. So, this is sweep of light beam, light beam travels here. It is converted into an electrical signal here. This is electrical signal. So, this signal gives the information or uh, transfer the information to the next step. Now, widely used barcodes, these are the general barcodes which are being used in the industry these days as uh, it was just mentioned UPC before. UPC is a universal product code. So, that is numeric only and length is 12 digits. It is widely used in US, Canada and grocery and other retail stores. So, this kind of barcode as I just said.
this is a upc barcode other than that majorly used barcode with alphanumeric kind of description is code 39 so it is adopted by dod automotive and other manufacturing industries there certain other barcode like postnet code 128 code 93 code abar so some are numeric some are alphanumeric so code 93 is also very similar to code 39 but two majorly use here are upc and code 39 now this is a subset of code 39 how does this look like this is just an example here so this is usd2 now the reason this code 39 name given is to is that it has nine elements that is bars and spaces which are used in each character and three of the elements are wide the placement of wide spaces and bars in the code uniquely designates the character each code begins and ends with either a wide or a narrow bar the code is sometimes referred to as code 3 of 9 in addition to the character set in the barcode there must also be so called uh, quiet zone that is both preceding and following the barcode in which there is no print this might confuse a decoder so this is the major barcode this ust2 ust2 is major uh, aim aim is automatic identification manufacturers association so this is a majorly used uh, barcode by aim so these are the few examples of the you can see 9 bits 9 bits that is why it is known as code 39 i, I would better say code 39 So next comes the barcode readers. The barcode readers comes in various configurations. Some need humans to operate them, and other are just standalone and completely automatic units. So these are usually classified as contact and non-contact. Contact readers are handheld vans or light vans, or operated by moving the tip quickly past the barcode. Non-contact are readers that focus on a light beam on the barcode, and the photo detector reads the reflected signal. so the contact barcode uh, reads uh, contact as the name suggests it has to make a contact the non contact doesn't make any contact the van tip must be in the contact when we use the contact kind of barcode reader the contact barcode readers are also available as portable units that can be carried around a factory or warehouse by the worker they are battery powered and include solid state memory device which is capable of storing data acquired during the operation so data can be transferred to computer subsequently it can be transferred using uh, the cloud computing or maybe uh, using some physical transfer method maybe like uh, uh, the data card the memory card or pen drive or so the portable barcode readers often include keypad that can be used by the operator to input data that cannot be entered via barcode so non contact barcode readers i'll discuss about them so what are contact barcodes again it consists of handheld devices such as vans and light pens which are operated by moving the tip of the van quickly past the barcode on the object and a document this is the kind of a contact barcode reader so next is non contact barcode reader so in this readers focus light of beam on the bar and the photo detector reads the reflected signal it is kind of a fixed beam and moving beam so this is non contact or stationary readers used fixed beam as i just mentioned like in the big shopping centers moving beam the light beam laser transfers an angular sweep to search for the barcode so this focus uh, the fixed beam readers are stationary units that use a fixed beam of light and they can be mounted beside a conveyor to scan items as they pass like this is the conveyor that is going this is a kind of a moving beam because beam is moving up and down suppose if the beam is also fixed if the bars are like this the fixed beam can also sometimes read that it when whenever the beam suppose this is a beam if it covers i'll put beam in some other color so well, this is a beam if it cover this whole code it might be able to read that so in the moving beam it has to move up and down in an angle up and down to read the complete bar okay the conveyor is going in this direction as it is mentioned here from left to right and uh, this moving beam scanner is reading the barcode in the fixed beam barcode i have just about the fixed beam barcode i have explained the typical moving beam reader are usually high focus beam of light uh, to search for the barcode upon an object the particular scan is defined as a single sweep of light beam through an angular path specified by rotating the mirror used to project the beam on the object the so typically the mirror rotates at a very high scan rates so up to maybe 1500 scans per second thus when a barcode is located 
uh, it may be read more than once permitting verification of the reading. The typical applications include mounting alongside the conveyor at, as it is just portrayed here. So, just like fixed beam readers as the portable devices that use points of at objects in the same manner as a pistol these can also be used these are applications that occur in warehousing and material handling operations. So, next is two dimensional barcode. The two dimensional barcodes were first introduced in 1987. There are two basic types of them. Number one is stack barcodes, number two is matrix barcode. Matrix barcode, as, as I took the example of the QR code in general, that is matrix QR code for WhatsApp, as what I picked, that is a matrix kind of a barcode. So, uh, this stacked barcode, what are these? This consists of multiple rows of conventional barcodes stacked on the top of each other. So, it is a kind of one barcode, then second barcode then third barcode and so on. So, these are just stacked. Now, matrix uh, barcodes these consider 2D patterns of data cells that are usually square and are colored dark or white. So, it is the general barcode that we generally see. It is this kind of barcode, the different square of different sizes and uh, there are two colors obviously dark and white, dark or white is generally black and white. So, advantage over the stack code is capability to contain more data. So, Obviously, one first is one dimensional, more than this data can be taken in the stacked barcode two dimensional stacked and more than this information can be carried by two dimensional matrix. So, this is amount of data that we can carry from left to right. The 2D barcodes stacked and matrix. This is how a stacked barcode looks like. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 barcodes stacked horizontally here. So, it, it typically consists of the multiple rows of uh, conventional linear barcodes stacked on the top of each other or just stacked side by side. The data density of stacked barcodes is typically. 5 to 7 times here it is 10 times for the linear barcode 39 linear barcode 39 as i said 39 it is 5 to 7 times generally 5 to 7 times the barcode is repeated so various stacking schemes may be applied to achieve the build up of barcodes uh, on the top of each other and still allow them to read the decoding in a stacked barcode is done by using laser type of scanner that reads the lines sequentially so now some issues with barcode reading include keeping the track of different rows during scanning dealing with the scanning swaths that uh, cross be between rows so swaths means the uh, the quiet period or the silent period is also there sometime then detecting and correcting localized errors that can also be printing defects may be similar to one dimensional barcodes. So, there can be certain issues in this. Next is matrix barcode, this is how matrix barcode looks like. So, it consists of 2D patterns of data cells that are usually square and colored dark and white. As I said, these contain more data, these are up to 30 times more dense than code 39. Code 39 is before, this is around 30 times more than what code 39 can create. Uh, however, there are more complex stacked barcodes and they require more sophisticated printing and reading equipment. The symbols must be produced and interpreted both horizontally and vertically in matrix kind of barcode because this is an area that symbolizes the whole information. Recent advances have seen considerable improvements in matrix uh, kind of readers which are easier to set up and use as well as being more robust and reliably operating under range of conditions. So, these were the barcodes. Next major kind of automatic identification and data capture methods is RFID, radio frequency identification. Now, what is RFID? RFID tags and their associated RFID technologies current a much discussed concept and represent great threat to the conventional barcode dominance. The only thing is that it is a little expensive, but the expense or the cost is not too heavy. Like the barcode, typically the uh, barcode cost if it is suppose uh, 10 barcode of size 1 square inch each can be printed in maybe 10 rupees the cost of one RFID tag might be 5 rupees or so. So, the cost difference is around 10 times or so, but the applications is quite bigger because generally what barcodes does they do not store information much they just 
transfer one kind of information to the other. Major information is stored in the computer. But RFID can also store information to some extent, to some extent, but majorly information is stored by the computer itself. So RFID uses an, an identification tag containing electronically coded data that is attached to the subject item. The tag consists of a memory microchip and an antenna usually encased in the plastic container. Then tag is a transponder. So what is transponder? That is a device capable of emitting a signal on the, of its own when it receives a signal from an external source. What is this? I will just explain. The tag communicates the encoded data by radio frequency as the item passes a reader and is activated by a low level RF magnetic field transmitted by the reader. Now what happens? So this tag has to satisfy the EPC standard that is electronic product code, EPC standard. Now which is RFID counterpart of UPC used in car barcodes like UPC those are there in barcodes, UPC again is, is again a standard. This is for barcodes, EPC is for RFID. So the tag communicates the encoded data to radio frequency to a reader uh, as the item is brought close to the proximity. The reader can be portable or stationary. It decodes and confirms the uh, radio frequency signals before transmitting the associated data to the computer. So what is happening actually this RFID is completely silent unless it comes close to a data stimulator. What happens? It comes close to the reader. Reader emits some of the frequency, some radio frequency and the, when this frequency is taken by the RFID gadget, it then transfers the information to the reader. It, it is how it happens. So now, uh, RFID signals are similar to those used in wireless radio or television transmission, but the difference is that the intensity of signal radio or television is quite high and RFID is quite low. And also one difference is that the in, in radio communication, the information is in one dimension. And in this case, the information is in two dimension. Uh, now what happens? Now here comes the user transponder. So transponder is a device that is capable of emitting a signal of its own when received signal from an external source, what happens the external source here is the reader RFID that is uh, to activate the RFID, the reader transmits a low level RF magnetic field that serves as power source for the transponder when they come near each other. So this transponder then helps the RFID to provide information to the reader. Okay. Another difference between the wireless radio television transmission and uh, the RFID is that the signal for power is substantially lower in RFID applications that is in milliwatt uh, of several watts that is uh, uh, in RFID it is mil in order of, of the order of milliwatts in uh, television transmission it is of the order of se several watts or so. So the differences in allowable frequencies that can also be used RFID versus radio and commercial military users can use the television radio frequency, but RFID cannot be used there. However, RFID are generally two types that is active and passive. This is integrated circuit chip and antenna. This is a RFID label. This also has to be printed. Now before talking about these things, an important factor is printing, printing of barcodes, printing of RF, RFID. In many applications, the labels are printed from medium to large quantities for product packages and for cartons used to ship or packaged books in case of barcodes. Then uh, RFID are also to be printed and also sometimes RFID are printed, uh, they are put in key rings or so, uh, they are put in a band or so. So the printing that happens, some, uh, that has to be flexible. Some, sometimes flexible electronics also play an important role here in printing of RFID labels. So uh, this is the integrated chip that is there, this is an antenna, this is an adhesive back label on which this is fixed and this is a chip. This is how typically a RFID label looks like. The two major types of tags are there, passive tags and active tags. The passive tags are uh, the one that have no internal power source, they derive the electrical power 
from the external signal transmitted by the reader. So, these are passive. So, these are smaller and less expensive and longer lasting. Active tags are the one which has transponder in them, they have their own battery power packs, they possess a larger memory capacity and longer communication range. Their cost is a little higher and uh, it is used for high value items. So, these are typically a few kind of RFID tags, but this the tag is there in keyring. Here we have this reader circuit, and this is one side of this. This is a digital pad, this is a digital deactivator, these are the kind of uh, soft label hard tags and accessories. So, this is an radio frequency sensor, big antenna is there that helps to emit and then get the information. So, industrial applications are inventory management, in inventory RFID codes are put when the cartons are packed and the whole information like what is there in the carton, whom the carton, to, uh, carton is to be supplied, when what is, is packed, certain pieces of information could be put here. Then supply chain management is similar to that in tracking systems that it is actually a real time tracking system that where is my package now, this is real time sometimes. So, the warehouse control obviously that comes in inventory management, the location identification this again comes in tracking system itself, then work in progress. An interesting application on RFID that I would like to show is that this is the diaper, whenever the diaper gets wet and it comes close to the crutch here, the crutch emits a signal and it tells that it is the wet. This is one of the applications that is produced by MIT, Michigan Institute of Technology by the people in MIT, the scientists have made this kind of application where they can, RFID sensor can detect the diaper moisture. So, the signal then can be sent to the caregivers as an alert. So, the researchers here say that these sensors can be manufactured in less than 2 cents, making it suitable for the disposable diapers without adding bulk. So, this kind of very low cost applications are there. So, advantages and disadvantages, advantages are the identification does not depend upon physical contact or direct line of sight, much more data can be contained in the identification tag than with most AIDC technologies. The data in read write tags can be altered for historical usage purposes or to reuse the tag. So, the, the, the tags can be reused, the larger number of data can be put in here and identification does not depend upon the physical contact. This is the major advantages or for RFID. The only disadvantage is that is the cost. So, disadvantage is it is more expensive than the other ADC technologies, but still it is widely used because of the benefits or the advantages or the merits or the usages that it gives against the cost that is invested on it. Now, a few major differences between barcode and RFID. The technology for the barcode is optical, the technology here is RF, radio frequency. Read and write capability, the QR codes can read only, RFID can write as well. Memory capacity, it is 14 to 16 digits for linear, I am just putting here, uh, it is 96 to 56 digits. Line of sight reading, it is required, not required. Reusability, QR codes are one time used. Once the data is put in the code, the data cannot be erased, the memory cannot be erased and reused in case of barcode, but in RFID it can be reused. The cost is very low cost uh, per label here, it is approximated 10 times the cost of the barcode RFID. Durability, barcodes are susceptible to dirt and scratches, RFID are more durable in plant environment. Next, other kinds of AIDC technologies, I will quickly just go with them, magnetic strips. Now, we generally swipe the cards, what happens, this is a magnetic strip that carries data, this is used for credit cards and money access cards, some more expensive than barcodes, must contact scanner to obtain a reading, this is the general characteristics of these. These applications I think you do know and uh, the magnetic uh, strip technology has been around for more than 40 years now and more uh, magnetic stripe cards are produced today than ever before, who are still there are widespread misunderstanding about magnetic stripes and their role in uh, bank or gifts. What are these magnetic stripes? These are thin layers of ferrous oxide that is applied to the surface of the card. Each oxide particle has magnetic north and magnetic south pole. When first applied to the surface of the car, the arrangement of these particles is totally random, the stripe is magnetically neutral and said to be uncoded or blank. Now, when it is coded or when we add information to the magnetic stripe, 
the oxide particles are forced to align their magnetic poles in same direction by periodically reversing the direction of the alignment this encoding creates a pattern of transitions between north and south of the magnetic fields which is the transition between north and south pole that are read as the data it is uh, red and it is interpreted as data similar to magnetic tapes we have optical character recognition gene can be read by humans and machine readers so it is low first read rate so it is just used to read the data by humans and the data is then converted the character is recognized and data is converted into the soft form similar to that machine vision machine vision is a very wide or big topic similar to machine vision we have computer vision when we talk about robotics or artificial intelligence computer vision comes into play machine vision is principal application is in inspection that is what is the distance between them oh, what are the number of components those are there then it is used with 2d optical symbols so machine vision also has these kinds of applications so there is camera and sensor that is there so then uh, machine vision system has some software algorithms uh, speed interfaces are higher the lens is there this is the lens here so this is the focal length and resolution of the length also determines what kind of range does it have then it will illumination also has to be there then machine and environment that is cycle time feeding system required space all those things are to be considered so this is just a quick view of uh, what are these major technologies now a quick comparison between the technologies those are discussed the two major technology which i discussed are barcodes and radio frequency other than that we have magnetic stripes ocr optical character recognition and machine vision this is manual data entry obviously this would be slow error rate is high equipment cost is very slow barcodes if i put into a categorical form and put them in low medium and high barcode could be put as medium in comparison to radio frequency the time for radio frequency to enter data is fast so the time to enter data for magnetics and ocr kind of the systems is also medium but machine vision is very fast the error rate for barcode and radio frequency are all low for ocr it could be medium for machine vision we cannot say it depends upon the kinds of the machine system that is developed now the cost of barcodes is low the barcode two dimensional could be higher it is better if i put medium here and for radio frequency it is comparatively higher magnetic stripes are medium obviously are on medium machine vision is very high because the complete setup has to be developed on machine vision is generally used in a flexible manufacturing system or uh, in a smart manufacturing system where the whole system is uh controlled by the machines by, by the by different sets of the setups those use the machines i'll discuss about the smart manufacturing and when i'll discuss about the plant simulation software now the advantages and disadvantages are listed here you can just have a quick look on them so the majorly manual entry is low cost these are high speed and uh these are also high speed so you can just have a quick look on this now to recapitulate what we discussed in this lecture is what is automatic identification and data capture what are its applications and alternatives components and technologies what is barcode technology and their applications what is radio frequency identification the types of cads and their applications radio frequency identification advantages and disadvantages then we compared radio frequency identification and barcodes also we discussed about the other technologies such as magnetic stripes OCR and machine vision so this is all about uh, the automatic identification we'll meet in the next week and discuss more on the course computer integrated manufacturing thank you